I kind of wish you could see how exhausted I am. That was a great workout. Rick Trevino, Brooks and Dunn. Ooh, let me get my air. Mel McDaniel, Tulsa Time Don Williams, just to name a few. Had me boogieing and scooting in the front room, and whew, lordy, I'm winded. And let me tell you, my arms feel good because I did my weights, too, as well. So that was a good thing. And remember, I'm up to six pounds on weightlifting. So and I am really got my energy tonight because, woo, that dancing afterwards, that helped that arm so much. Either that or the one tension headache I took. Either something did. Anyway. With that being said, let's hit the woman's world. This is May 2nd, 2021. Let's read the good parts, shall we? Fill your week with smiles. Now, we got to find the very first day here. So, that would be Sunday, May the 2nd. That's Lemonade Day. Yep, say cheers. Kick back with, relax with lem lemonade cocktail. Now, they say cocktail, but I say do a le regular lemonade. You don't need the alcohol. Let's go to the next day, which is the third. Do we have anything? Yes, we do. It's Garden Medita Meditation Day, Monday, May 3rd. Experience bliss by spending time in the green spaces relaxing. And by researchers at the Royal Horticulture Society says adding a bit of greenery to your garden has the same stress-reducing effects as an eight mindful se mindfulness session. They had 42 folks add plants to their previously bare gardens and measured their stress hormone levels before and after the change. The result, the stress levels decreased after the plants were added, and 40% of the subjects said that they revamped garden helped them feel relaxed. Woo, baby, I need some more water. 52% felt happier, and 26% felt closer to nature. Now, looking for ways to expand your garden? Well, consider adding some of the plants used in the study, like azaleas, lavenders, and petunias. Now, petunias are my favorite out of those three. Because we always have great luck with petunias. Okay, now we're going to move on to Tuesday. Ooh, this is bird day. Welcome the birds. Today is a great day to welcome birds to your yard. To ensure the beauties keep coming back, Jordan Reuter of the American Bird Conservatory advises picturing your yard like a house. Just like your home is where you eat, sleep, play safely, your yard is that for the birds that live there, she says. In addition to setting out a feeder, the kitchen, she advises planting native plants without pesticides so birds can create a nest for their bedroom. And think of a bird bath as a place for the birds to get a drink and wash up, says Rudder, noting that the you, that getting the birds the house in order to, is worth it for them and for you. Okay, Wednesday, May the 5th, is Cinco de Mayo. Yeah, you're going to dip into delish. Which, speaking of which, I don't know a lick of Spanish. And some character has been commenting on my uh, Darcy videos. Just uh, This is side note. So I actually had to look up some of this, you know, no, I know that means no, but uh, the cute que or something like that, it said take care or something, I don't know. But please don't comment in Spanish. I can't speak a lick of it. I only took one year of French, and I didn't do that well because I'm a redneck. Okay, anyway, dip into delish. It says celebrate with an authentic Mexican dish, Cuso Fundido, the hot dip. Its name means melted cheese. It's a spicier version of queso. And I don't eat any spicy food, so uh, we're not going to read that Cuesado Fundido. You have to pick up the magazine to get the recipe. Okay, now Thursday, Friday, no, Saturday, yes. Saturday, May 8th is Iris Day. Now you're going to feel extra sunny. Bask in the spring beauty with an iris bouquet. The blooms represent hope, so displaying them in your home is a great way to add joy to your day. Uh, it says, joke of the week. Yesterday, my husband thought he saw a bug in the kitchen. He sprayed everything down and cleaned it thoroughly. Today, I'm putting the bug in the bathroom. That is cute. Start your week with a laugh. There's two socks, and it shows a watching, washing machine with suitcases. It says, that's strange. His luggage showed up, but he didn't. So that's kind of cute. Uh, here's a joke. Why did the robot go on summer vacation? Why did the robot go on summer vacation? He needed to recharge his batteries. 
we see a little girl, looks like a first aid kit, and a little boy sitting on the um, sofa. We're playing doctor. You're the patient, so you have to sit in the waiting room for an hour. That's spot on, honestly. Okay, moving forward. Whew. I'm still trying to cool down from that exercise. Oh, you know how much I love doing these. Power of Love Stories. The Lost Love Letters Found at Last. Speaking of which, did you know that during World War II, my grandparents were like the original internet? Let me tell you how they met. So, my great uncle was with my grandpa. Now, this is grandpa's version because I like his ver grandma's version better than grandpa's. So, we're going with grandma's. And she said he pulled out a picture of her, his, my great uncle. And my grandpa saw that picture. And he said, is that your girlfriend? And my great uncle Otis said, no. He says, is that your wife? Absolutely not. So my grandpa said, well, then it has to be your mother. No, absolutely not. That's my ugly old sister is what my great uncle said. Late great uncle, I should say. And that's what I was told by grandma. And then from then, he asked for her address, and they started writing back and forth. And then he came home two weeks later after meeting. They just knew they had to get married. The most romantic love story you'll ever hear. Anyway, lost love letters found at last. Let's read this story. While helping a friend renovate an old house, Dario Trompas rescued some letters that had been found in the rubble and discovered the 80-year-old love story of Lynn and Mim Martin. Realizing the treasure that he possessed, Dario launched a quest to return them to the mystery couple's family, and 13 years later, he finally succeeded. It shows the, the man who found the treasure, and it must be the family member. Let's read the caption to the picture. I'm so grateful to him, says Jeanne Pinnell, left of Dario Trampas right, who returned her parents' love letters. It shows a bunch of letters from long ago. It says, the long-lost letters were salvaged after being discarded during a home renovation. Okay, well, let's read this story, shall we? The crash of the sledgehammer stopped abruptly. There's something stuck in here. The construction foreman called, reaching through the rubble and partially demolished wall in the home he was renovating. Oh, just some old papers, he said, dismissively tossing them in the dumpster. Curious, Dario Trompas, who had been helping with the project, grabbed what turned out to be a stack of envelopes from the trash. These are personal letters, he realized, noticing that they had been addressed to a man named Lynn Martin in elegant script, and seeing the 1939 postmark, the Port Moody British Columbia history buff's interest was further piqued as he stowed the letters in his car. That evening, Dario spread the letters out on his kitchen table. Choosing one, he carefully slid the letter from the envelope and began reading. Seems like a miracle the way you appeared. I thought there was nothing left in life for me. Then you wrote to me out of a clear blue sky. A woman named Mim, M-I-M, had written a man named Lynn, L-E-N. Love is a wondrous thing, a genuine gift. It stimulates us, revives us, and makes us think that the life is worth living. Sounds straight out of an old movie, Dario thought. And as he read more letters, he realized he was holding a precious story of blossoming romance in his hands. Suddenly, something stirred deep inside him. I need to return these, Dario thought. A heartfelt mission. Scoring the letters for clues, he learned Mim was short for Miriam, a secretary at a hatchery from Edmonton, Alberta. Lynn had been an X-ray technician who had been doing wartime work at Vancouver's Victor Ray X-ray. But a Google search using the information yielded no hints. Hits. Not sure where else to turn, Dario tucked the letters away, but he never forgot about them. Every few years, he'd take them out, try searching again without any luck. But last year, when he came across them while doing spring cleaning, Dario felt a pang of sadness and realized Mim and Lynn had likely passed away. But if they had married and had a family, their children would probably love to have the letters, he thought. I know I would if they were my mom and dad. So he got back on his computer, but instead of Google, he turned to Facebook for help. Here's what I know, Dario posted on his page, explaining how he found the letters. Please share this post. Maybe someone knows someone who can help. A friend suggested he also post on another Facebook page called 
nostalgic backslash sentimental Vancouver, where people share old photos and stories, and it proved to be the key to unlocking the mystery. He learned that Mim and Lynn had indeed married and had two children. Unfortunately, the couple had passed away, but after a series of tips, Dario was amazed to find himself dialing the phone number of Jean Pennell, M, uh, Mim and Lynn's daughter, and on all days, Father's Day. Jean had just sat down to a family dinner and almost didn't answer, but something told her to go pick up that phone. I've been looking for you for 13 years, Dario said. I think I have your parents' love letters. Is this some kind of scam, Jean wondered. But Dario texted her a picture of the letters, and Jean's heart clenched. That's my mom's handwriting, she sighed wistfully. Back where they belong. Just days later, Jean made the trip from her home in Abbotsford to meet Dario. It's just breathtaking, she whispered as she read her mother's passionate words. I never knew this side of them, that they were so romantic. Jean had, was so able to fill in some of her parents' story of, for Dario, telling him that they had met casually as teens. Years had passed, and after a four-year engagement, her mom had suffered a heart-shattering breakup. To get her mind off of it, she went on a vacation with a friend of Vancouver and ran into Lynn. Mom said he swept her off her feet. They were married in 1940, had two children, Jean and her late brother Douglas. Her dad had been a successful businessman and her mom was an accomplished pianist. They had a good life and I just know they're looking down on this. I'm so grateful, Jean told Dario. I'm just glad the letters are back where they belong, he said. Today, Jean still marvels at how and when the letters were found their way to her. We're going through dark times with COVID with people not being able to see their families, but this shows love is powerful and does conquer all shares Jean. My parents' love had never died, and now it's an inspiration to people all over the world. Mom was right. Love is a genuine gift. The article by Michelle Abrams. They show pictures here at the bottom. Mim, who wrote letters in 1930. Lynn, the x-ray tech who swept Mim off her feet, and then a gorgeous picture of the couple later in life. The two were married and lived a long life together. Wonderful. It says three ways to find a long-lost loved one. 1. Maximize your search. Instead of searching just the name of a long-lost loved one, add in their interest, says an online search expert, Michael Miller. If your friend was a gardener, type that in with their name and you might find a blog that they write in their organization. Even more, sign up for Google Alerts to get an email any time that their name comes up online. 2. Ask a local librarian. If you know the town where the person you're looking for lived, call the local librarian and ask if there's any directories, says the private investigator Norma Tillman, author of the Private Investigation 101. From there, you can learn their address, where they live, where they've moved. You can even visit the library's website to email your questions and get a remote answer. Three, visit the, quote, new, end quote, virtual white pages. Zabrasearch.com, Z A B A S A E A R C H. Again, Z like zebra, A B like boy, A S like Sam, E A R C like cat, H like hunter.com gives you free access to data in public records, from the phone numbers to the names of their relatives, says Tillman. On the website, you can even do a message search, quote unquote, to learn if the person has left a message for you somewhere on the web. No luck? You can leave a personalized message for the person of interest to find on this site. That's pretty interesting. Okay. Let's go on here. What a great story, though, that they shared. And a great life and love as well. Natural ways to feel great. Found stressed enders that, makes, that are better than medication. We're grateful for the warmer weather, yet 80% of us are dealing with lingering tension after this past year. That's why we tapped experts for their easy strategy to calm nerves and boost mood more effectively than prescription medication and without side effects. Send happy thoughts. Whether you're hearing from them or spreading them, kind words tamp down stress hormones. No wonder Georgetown University scientists say sending a short text to a loved one reminding them why you appreciate their smile cuts tension in five minutes. In half, of, in, in half in five minutes. And sending just one or two upbeat messages daily soothes even chronic stress for 96% of women studied. That's better than anti-anxiety excuse me, medication, which are effective for only about half of the folks who try them. 
stretch with music. Turn up your favorite tunes and arch your back or reach for your toes for 10 minutes twice daily and you're going to feel 65% calmer all day long. British scientists say psychiatrist Norman Rosenthal, MD, says that because stretching the large muscles in your body prompts the release of mood-steadying hormones, endorphins. While listening to music boosts the benefits of increasing your production of comma alpha brain waves. Fire up the grill. Root vegetables are packed with nerve-soothing nutrients called cartonoids that cut anxiety by 55%. If you enjoy two cups of them daily, say Yale researchers, you're going to effortlessly eat 50% more veggies if they're roasted or grilled since dry heat caramelizes plant sugars, making them taste sweeter. Plus, the root veggies lower blood pressure, too. Try a deep sea remedy. Quieting stress is easy as getting more omega-3 fatty acids, often found in fish. And you don't have to be a seafood lover to benefit. Research in JAMA Open Network suggests that taking 2,000 milligrams of fish oil daily helps you feel 63% calmer in one month. That's better than a prescription, explains psychiatrist Pete Lynn, MD. When the omega-3s in fish oil soak into your brain, they act as powerful natural anti-anxiety agents. The tip is stashing the supplements in the freezer prevents fish burps. Note that check with a doctor before supplementing. Brenda Kearns is the author. Okay. Let's go on. Head off summer UTIs. Summer days are finally near. We cannot wait. But we could do without the UTIs that warmer weather triggers. To ward off these infections, which strike women over 50 three times more than younger women, just enjoy a sunny stroll. That afternoon stroll you enjoy each day helps cut your risk of bladder infections by 60%. Report Boston University researchers. Turns out exercise energizes the immune cells that the kills the bladder bacteria. While the vitamin D3 your skin produces when exposed to UV light prods your bladder to release productive compounds called antimicrobial peptides, the bonus combining motion and sunlight makes your brain production of tiredness taming hormone dopamine soar, says the UCLA researchers, increasing energy by 55% for eight hours. Now, snack on blueberries. I love blueberries, but usually they are way too expensive. Just saying. And I don't like the frozen. I like the fresh that's in a little package that you can buy. Just wash a few and then enjoy. Anyway. Fresh, juicy blueberries are finally starting to pop in the supermarkets, and enjoying one cup daily could reduce your odds of developing a summer UTI by 50%, suggests a study in the journal Molecular Nutrition and Food Research, as study co-author Ron Chin, Ph.D., explains blueberries contain a unique compound called petrostilibine. Now, this strengthens the bladder linings and kills troublesome bacteria on contact. The bonus, blueberries anthocyanins have been shown to stimulate the brain, boosting both short-term memory and balance and coordination by at least 30%. So if you enjoy them daily, reveals Tufts University investigators. Make this tea a habit. Sweet tart hibiscus tea is a tasty hot or iced and sipping 36 ounces daily cuts your bladder infection risk by up to 40%. Now, British scientists say that urologist Bernard Rocco, M.D., credits his hibiscus compounds, glycosoids, which block the growth of spreading bladder bacteria. The bonus, University of Arizona scientists say that the bruised fruit acids can trim up to 13 points off your blood pressure if you sip three cups daily. Brenda Kearns. Now, me, I just like plain old iced tea without any sugar in it, just straight up tea. Going on. Say bye-bye to pesky GI hassles. The sun is shining, the birds are chirping, and you want to get out and enjoy every minute of it. The great news, if GI problems have been holding you back from warmer weather fun, these science-proven cures can help you enjoy a easy breezy day, symptom-free. The easy prescription is just kicking back for 30 minutes, daily calms the adrenal glands. British scientists say tamping down their production of digestion sabotaging stress hormones, this curbs your risk of heartburn, abdominal pain, bloat, and other miseries by 70%. Now, quiet car sickness. It's so great to hit the road to visit the loved ones again, but not so much with that queasiness that sometimes happens when you're in the car.
To ease motion sickness in 60 seconds, take slow sniffs of freshly peeled orange or tangerine. Stanford University researchers say the aromatic oils in the citrus calms the nausea in the center of the brain, plus they activate the vague nerve, which helps the stomach muscles contract properly so your food can pass quickly without causing the churning feeling, quote unquote. Now you're going to tame your heartburn. Going from winter to comfort food to lighter fare triples heartburn risk. Now the fix is inhale for five seconds and then exhale, exhale for five, says Mark Hyman, MD, the author of Food Fix. Calm breathing activates the diaphragm, which stops the stomach acid from creeping up into the esophagus. This cuts heartburn by up to 78% and in 10 minutes. That's better than Tums. End veggie gas. Now bothered by gas that you're savoring more fresh farm produce, try munching on half a teaspoon of fennel seeds. Doing so cuts gassiness and cramping in as little as 20 minutes, said a study in Biomed Research International suggests. Study co-author Vadanav Patel, Ph.D., says fennel compounds turn off that gas-forming enzymes. Now beat your backups. Now up to 40% of us feel constipated when our daily routine changes in the spring. But University of Minnesota scientists say chewing sugar-free gum for about 10 minutes before bed improves regularity in the morning and makes us feel effective as a prescription laxative. Sorbitol found in the sugar-free gum is gentle laxative, Brenda Kern says. Moving on. Okay, urgent health news, okay? Four ways to make your COVID vaccine work even better. Here's a tip. Skip the over-the-counter painkiller before your appointment as they interfere with your body's response to the vaccine. It's safe to use them afterward, the CDC reports, to relieve side effects. Good news. Before my vaccine, I didn't have any painkillers. And I've been trying to limit myself on that. Anyway. Um, hello, train. A month out. Okay, let's let's see here. Four ways to make your COVID vaccine work even better. Yes, we hear you. Please stop honking your horn. Okay, now that vaccines are becoming more available, you're ready to take the plunge so you can get back to spending more time with your loved ones. The great news, these easy t steps ensure that the vaccine triggers higher immunity with fewer side effects. A month out, munch on Brazil nuts. They're rich in selenium, a mineral crucial for immune function. In fact, only one study revealed that taking 200 milligrams of selenium for 30 days made participants' vaccination 54% more likely to be protective. And it only takes two Brazil nuts to get that amount. Scheduling a shot? Choose a morning shot. Book before 11 a.m. if possible. Research at UK University of Birmingham found that people who received morning vaccines produced up to four times more protective antibodies than those vaccinated later. Experts suspect higher AM levels of hormones optimize immune response. Well, let's see. I didn't munch on any Brazil nut. I didn't schedule it in the morning. Let's see if I've got any more that might be good. Two days out, get a good night's sleep. It'll make your immune system 44% stronger. Per University of Pittsburgh research for a sleep assist, try 3 milligrams of melatonin. British research reveals it reduces nighttime awakenings by 30% and boosts antibody uh, producing cells. One tr to try is Irwin Natural Melatonin plus 5-HTP and Rhododelia at IrwinNaturals.com. Note, check with your health care provider before supplementing. Nope, I didn't get a good night's sleep. Let's uh, go on. Vaccination day, crack a joke or two. In a British study, cheerful folks were 66% more likely to produce antibodies post-vaccine than less than happy people. Experts say a sunny look at outlook enhances activity of parasympathetic nervous system, which boosts immunity. And the author of that uh, story was Melissa Gotthart, but it says before the shot, shot do a few arm cur curls. Now, British researchers found that women who stimulated arm muscles before getting vaccinated had a stronger antibody response, meaning their virus protection was more robust and longer lasting. I wonder how it is if you do it afterwards, because my mom had given me a tip. She said, after you get your shot, do the chicken wing and sit out there doing the chicken wing. And trust me, I'm sure the people at where, where I had my shot at was going by going, what in the world is she doing? She's flapping like a chicken. Is she okay? But if they watched me work out tonight, they're probably thinking the same thing. Moving on. Uh, stay young with WW. Sandal ready feet for less. Now, these kitchen staples cure common foot irks, so you step into spring with confidence. 
To soften their rough heels, pour two cups of warm water and one cup of powdered milk into a basin. Soak, milk, or soak feet for 10 minutes, rinse, and, re, and use a foot file to remove skin. Milk's exfoliating lactic acid whisk away thick layers of dead skin to reduce cracks, and its lipids replenish the moisture. To brighten yellow nails, peel a fresh orange, then use the rind to scrub the toenails for one minute. Let it sit for five minutes and then rinse. The compound d limononine in the fruit lifts away the yellow surface, stains plus rich stores of vitamin C in the rind brighten the further enhancing of the whitening effect. To remove calluses, soak cotton balls in beer, don't have any of that in the house, and place on the calluses. Slip on an old pair of socks, let it sit for 30 minutes, remove and buff the skin with a pumice stone. The bruise enzyme loosens bonds between the hardened dead skin cells so they're easier to slough off. I don't like the way my feet look, so it's rare if you ever see a picture of my feet, you would know why. So, Of course, I'm self-conscious about every single inch of my body, so there we go. Okay. Ask America's Ultimate Experts. Would you believe we're halfway through this magazine? That's hard for me to even believe. And it says, help, strengthen, help me strengthen my bonds. Experts share easy ways to melt the stress of being cooped up for months and grow even closer to family and friends that you love and miss. Reconnect with the family. Celebrate the silly. Nothing says quote-unquote family like shared quirks that make you unique. Grow even closer by using your creative uh, to celebrate your tribe's uncommon habits, says expert Andrea Bonaire, Ph.D. If, for example, your brood loves breakfast for dinner, consider having a flapjack recipe contest. Or if a loved one is known for his eccentric socks, pick a day of the week where you all wear mismatched pattern socks. Celebrating the things that make your family yours fosters a sense of safety and belonging. Share a good laugh. Families that are laughing together are not only feeling closer, they're also more resilient. Just flex your funny bone in new ways. If you say you're sharing a blessing as part of your dinner routine, consider a shaking it up once a week and ask any, everyone to tell a joke instead. This shot of novelty is a powerful conversation starter. After all, few things bond us together quickly more than a shared giggle. Count down to fun. We're all t ticking off the days until we can see that extended family again. Why not honor that anticipation with a kind of, quote, advent calendar, end quote. Have your grandkids check off the boxes while you do the same where you're at and enjoy a small treat until that big day. According to expert Amber Levine, MD, it's a small moment that adds up to a larger feeling of closeness. Reconnect with friends. Start afresh. When we haven't seen our friends in a long time, it's natural to experience a bit of awkwardness and even put our foot in our mouth. As excitement gets better of us, and we may accidentally bring up a sensitive subject, in this case, rather than try to brush past the unease, just name what you're feeling, suggests Bonaire. For example, I'm so embarrassed I said that, or I'm sad that I made you feel bad. Calling out our emotions shows your authenticity and lets you take ownership of what you said so that you can start fresh. Tell your stories. Listening to your, our friends deepens bonds, but you may be surprised that talking about yourself is just as vital, especially when it comes to old friendships, as studies show that we tend to reveal fewer new things about ourselves over time. Just share details like the new book you enjoyed or how your grandkids love showing off their new watercolors. It's often the things we think aren't worth mentioning that makes us others feel like they really know us. Dream together. Quote, Talking about the future together is all about hope and potential. End quote. Observe his psychiatrist, Mike, Michelle Rabith, MD. It says, um, who says, having shared goals lifts us and inspires us. Indeed, making plans to say, take that girlfriend's trip you had to postpone a year ago ensures your relationship picks right up where it left off. And the expert panel today was Andrea Bonier, the PhD author of Detox Your Thoughts, is a psychologist behind the popular Washington Post advice columns asked Dr. Andrea. Uh, Amir Levine, who is the co-author of Attach, the New Science of Adult Attachment and How It Can Help You Find and Keep Love. More at attachthebook.com. Michelle Ribba, MD, a professor of psychiatry at University of Michigan and co-director of Michigan Workplace Mental Health Solutions. Okay. 
They have a beautiful article on Cinco de Mayo fun. If you guys celebrate it, pick it up. They have some spicy and, and fun recipes, but I'm not so much into spicy, so I apologize. I'm not sharing any recipes to speak of this time. You're going to have to pick it up to check it out. Um, they show a, a great way to decorate walls and make it look like a gallery. Okay, your organized home. This is the way to outwit sneaky dust magnets. Everything from shedding pets to an uptick in pollen makes spring prime grime time. Thankfully, our easy tricks help keep that mess away. No elbow grease or harsh chemicals required. Lift grime from the blinds. Now with dryer sheets, and you're going to take tongs. It says, wouldn't it be great to clean your blinds, repel the furniture in the dust in one fell swoop? You can do just that. Simply use rubber bands to secure two dryer sheets around each pair of kitchen tongs. Then clamp the tongs over each slat and slide it across. The sheets will lift the dust in a hard to reach space when re residue of the fabric softener will create a fresh smelling dust busting force field. Revitalize lampshades with a slice of white bread. Now, cleaning lampshades with vacuums requires taking the shade off so the lamp doesn't topple, then putting it back and on again. The easier way, now listen to this, just head to the kitchen, grab a slice of white bread, then gently dab the bread on the shade. Not only will it pick up the grime, but it is, absorbs the dust attracting grease that our hands leave behind when we reach for the on and off switch. That, I don't know, sounds weird to me. Clean fast, clean fans fast with a pillow pocket. Ugh, every time you clean, reach up to clean your ceiling fan, you hit a cascading puff of dust to the rescue. Spray the inside of a pillowcase with a mixture of one cup water, one fourth cup of white vinegar, and two teaspoons of olive oil. Pull the case over each individual fan blade, recommends Lauren Bowen, director at Two Maids and a Mop. The vinegar lifts the dirt and grime, while the olive oil leaves a dust-repelling seal. Now, when you slide off that pillowcase, all the dust that has built up over time will be trapped. Wipe electronics off with coffee filters. Electronics like flat tops and laptops can be dust magnets because their electric charge attracts the airborne gunk. The solution? unused coffee filters. They're soft, they're gentle enough to use on your TV screen and all your other devices, and their porous material makes them great dust absorbers. Just wipe and you're done. Okay, clear dusty curtains with a duct tape roller. No need to lug out the vacuum to remove dust from your curtains. Just grab a clean paint roller, wrap a piece of duct or packing tape around the barrel with the sticky side out, and roll it up and down until over the curtains. That tool works like a giant lint roller to pick up dust. To give the curtains an extra spring clean scent, just whip a natural fabric freshener in a spray bottle and mix one part water, one part vodka, and a few drops of your favorite essential oil and spritz away. Well, that's interesting to say the least. Okay, we're going to move forward. They do a little piece here about deserving a getaway. And I'll let you all read that. I didn't find the cartoon any funny, really. Uh, the Guardian Angel Spirit Lifters was very nice, but we're going to the Circle of Kindness. Uh, this is readers share little reminders of how much goodness there is in the world. A simple hello can brighten someone's day. Due to state guidelines, each person who enters the local grocery store is greeted by an employee who wipes down their cart with a sanitizer. I recently noticed no one was speaking to the employee as he methodically did his job. So when I approached, I looked at him in the eyes and said, Hello, I hope you're having a nice day. Thank you for cleaning the carts. He was stunned. Thank you for taking time to speak to me, he said. A simple hello can brighten someone's day. Melissa Henderson from Mount Pleasant, South Carolina. Her package was a treat. As a dark chocolate aficionado, I have been searching for my favorite bars. I love Ghirardelli, 72% dark chocolate. I used to buy it in the U.S., but with the border closed, that was not a possibility. One day when I returned home from walking with my pup, there was a package on my porch. It was from my sister who lives in British Columbia. Inside the box, I found 10 bags of Ghirardelli dark chocolate. What a treat! Now I know it is available in Canada, and it certainly made my day. My heart thanks her so much. 
Sandy Timko from St. Catharines, Ontario. And that's just wonderful. So we're going forward. A moment for you. Your prayers are more powerful than you can imagine. When you need courage, you will find it. When you seek a guiding light, one will shine bright. When you wish for comfort and hope, both will be provided. That's because you have angels watching over you and beside you, now and always. I love that. Okay, a five-minute romance, a charming tale. After running into a handsome stranger at the post office, Cat, a professional dog walker, gets the chance to have a whole new quote-unquote leash on love. And y'all know I love reading these because love exists where? In books, movies, and songs. That's it. Okay, Cat smiled excitedly, pulling the small padded envelope from her post office box. With a click, she locked the box and then crossed the lobby to the table by the window. She removed the charm from the envelope, marveling at how it gleamed in the morning sun. It looks just like Charlie, she said, thinking about the charmer who showed her, showered her with kisses every time she came home. If only she could find a loyal two-legged male to do the same. She unclasped the bracelet and set it on the table, clipping the new trinket to it. There, she said, admiring that Ching King Charles Spaniel charm. Side note. What dog is in Unleashing Mr. Darcy? You're right. It is the King Charles type of dogs, and I always loved those. Never owned one growing up. The closest I ever had was a Cocker Spaniel named Blackie, and I was a young girl. Real young. Anyway, back to the story. She draped the bracelet over her wrist, drew clasp, clasp it, and headed off for the door. Oof, she exclaimed, colliding with something furry. She stepped back and beheld a pair of big brown eyes and a fuzzy face. I'm sorry, said a husky voice from behind the huge stuffed dog. The pup lowered and another set of brown eyes and fuzzy face appeared. This one more dark and stubble was less polyester fur. That makes two of us, Cat said, her heart fluttering. I wasn't looking where I was going, but she was looking now. I was f the uh, fetching stranger's hair was black and lustrous as the coat of the plushing plushy dangling from his arm, the pushed-up sleeve of his Ranglan tee revealed a peak of an athletic build. No worries, he said. This big guy can take it. Cat wondered with a thrill if he was talking about himself or the dog. I just hope the post office has a box big enough for him. Cat sized up the pup. As luck would have it, there's a dog sofa box in the, my SUV. You can have it. She grinned. You'll save me a trip from the recycling center. He smiled at Cat as she led him out onto the tree-lined street to her car. Cat walks canines, he said, referring to her vehicle wrap that showed a silhouette of a pony-tailed woman walking three dogs. Cat popped her hatch. That's me, professional pooch walker. Cute, he said, tossing a glance her way. Cat caught it and blushed. I'm Chris, by the way. Nice, Cat said, contending with a carton to meet you. Chris leaned into the cargo space next to her. Here, let me, he said, reaching for the box as their eyes met. As his fingers brushed hers, excitement shot through her. Down, girl. I really appreciate this, Chris said, boxing up the toy, and I know Isabella will, too. Isabella, as Cat was about to respond, the clock in the town square struck nine. Chewing her bottom lip and wanting to know more, she reluctantly said, I hate to run, but I have a date in thirty minutes with a basset hound. Nice to meet you, Chris. Likewise, he smiled, holding her gaze a beat longer before returning to the post office. Uh, let me, I lost my place. Uh oh. After leaving the company of a tall, dark, and handsome, Cat found herself with a short, furry, and wrinkled. Who am I? Cinderella, she asked Gus, her long eared companion padding beside her in a park. A clock strikes, and I take off like a greyhound. I could have spared a few minutes to find out if he was single, turned on the charm, maybe even gotten his number. No offense, she said, stooping to scratch the hound's ear, but my love life is going to the dogs. Gus cocked his head and cast his sad eyes on her, the tag on his color jangling, and suddenly Cat realized she wasn't jingling. Her eyes flew to her wrist. My bracelet is gone. She and Gus retraced their steps over the arch bridge and past the rose-covered gazebo. They searched and no bracelet. Her phone rang inside her bag, and she puffed out of breath. Cat walks canines she said in a chipper voice that bellied how she was feeling. Hey, Cat, this is Chris, one of the big stuffed dog. Her mood perked up. Uh, Chris, hi. I remembered your number from the ad and was wondering if you're missing a charm bracelet. 
Yes, yes I am, she yipped happily, glancing at her four-legged client, who was now wagging his tail off. When I went back inside to the mail my niece's package, I found one on the floor, Chris explained. Cat nodded so Isabella was his niece. When I saw the dog, Kate Charms, I guessed it might be yours. Sounds like mine, Cat said as she smiled as the tail wagger. Where can I meet you? I'm in the park now. I noticed a coffee, Charms, Chris said, so how about I treat you to a cup at the kiosk there? Cat beamed awesome. They have the best brew in town. Absolutely, Chris agreed. I never go anywhere else. I'm loyal like that. Loyal? Cat thought blissfully. Now that word worked like a charm. Crystal Moore, the author. Great five-minute romance. Anyway, your horoscope for the week of Sunday, May 2nd to Saturday, May 8th. Take a deep set seat. This is by Marissa Brown. We're going to cover every single one of you people. We're going to start out with the Tauruses. April 20th through May 20th. If there's a proposal you've been wanting to pitch at work, go make it for the second. You'll make an impression from the eighth on, and you'll want to bolster aspects of life that offer security. It's a great time to bond with the loved ones. Your lucky days, May 2nd, 5th, and 6th. Your lucky numbers, 2, 9, and 11. If you're a Gemini, now that's May 21st through June 20th. Speaking your truth comes organi organically on the 3rd. Share what's in your heart. Then make a point to spend time with activities that bring you bliss from the seventh on. Prioritizing self-care in the, this way can bolster your mind, body, and heart. Your lucky days, May 3rd, 4th, and 8th. Your lucky numbers, Donna, don't drop the water, 5, 6, and 14. There we go. Cancer. Now that's June 21st through July 22nd. You'll be feeling reflective from the fourth on. Practices like meditating boost of self-awareness. On the sixth, it'll be easier to connect with friends and co-workers on a shared goal. Talking things through can lead to productivity. Your lucky days will be May 4th, 5th, and 6th. Your lucky numbers will be 7, 11, and 12. If you're a sexy bombshell of a Leo, that's me, August 3rd. July 23rd through August 22nd. Dive into group projects from the fifth on. Sharing creative ideas can be inspiring and lead to a win. And around the seventh, finding new ways to connect with friends has you feeling more supported and cared for. Enjoy it. Your lucky days, May 3rd, 7th, and 8th. Your lucky numbers, 6, 10, and 11. If you're a Virgo, that's August 23rd through September 22nd, you're going to have a burst of confidence to express what's on your mind from the third on. This can help you earn recognition on the job and in your personal life, and on the 6th, pour your emotions into a project. It can feel thrilling and productive. Your lucky days are May 2nd, 3rd, and 7th. Your lucky numbers, 5, 9, and 10. If you're a Libra, that's September 23rd through October 22nd. You're going to be able to connect with loved ones in a more meaningful way on the 2nd. Go for it. Then from the 8th on, plan for a future trip or try an eye-opening online course. Now's the time to enjoy your new experiences. Your lucky days are May 2nd, 3rd, and 8th. Your lucky numbers are 4, 8, and 9. Now if you're a Scorpio, that's October 23rd through November 21st. Surface-level conversations may feel less interesting from the 3rd on. Talking about your most heartfelt needs instead, of, instead can prove healing. And on the 6th, working with a friend or a co-worker on a project can make re for great results. Your lucky days, May 5th, 6th, and 7th. Your lucky numbers, 7, 8, and 18. Now, if you're a Sagittarius, that's November 22nd through December 21st. If you've been wanting to switch up your money-making approach, talk your game plan through on the 2nd, you're going to feel empowered and supported. Now, come the 3rd, connect with friends to help each other navigate challenges you're going to soar. Your lucky days, May 4th, 7th, and 8th. Your lucky numbers, 2, 7, and 16. Now, if you're a Capricorn, that's December 22nd through January 19th. Express what's in your heart on the 6th. Opening up to a friend could bolster your bond. And from the 8th on, it'll be easy to blend your social life with your routine. Regular texting or Zoom calls have you feeling centered. Your lucky days, May 2nd, 5th, and 6th. Your lucky numbers, 5, 6, and 14. If you're an Aquarius, June, June, sorry, January 20th through February 18th, from the third on, you're going to feel infusing your life with more fun and spontaneity. Follow your heart. And on the sixth, talk through your outstanding issues with a loved one. Together, you're going to reach a happy path forward. Your lucky days are May 3rd, 6th, and 7th. And your lucky numbers are 5, 12, and 14. 
If you're a Pisces, now that's February 19th through March 20th, spend time with friends from the 8th on. Doing everyday activities together like cooking or walking can bring untold joy. And on the 6th, brainstorm with your friends about new projects. You could land on a creative group endeavor. Your lucky days, May 5th, 6th, and 7th. Your lucky numbers, 3, 4, 11. And the last one, Aries. That's March 21st through April 19th. Pitch a passion project to higher ups on the 2nd. You're going to feel quite, you'll make quite the impression. From the 3rd on, connect with people outside your usual social circle. The mental stimulation can provide filling thrilling and fulfilling. Your lucky days are May 2nd, 7th, and 8th. Your lucky numbers 2, 3, and 10. Would you believe we have only two more pages and we have completed this whole magazine in one night? I am that good. Okay. You deserve good things. You are worthy. Love and friendship, you have so much to offer. There's no way they won't unfold. Success, you were born to win. An amazing life, You've always been destined for one. Dreams come true. You were made to live them too. For every single thing on your wish list, you're more than qualified. Now, everyday heroes. Proof it only takes a little kindness to make a difference. And we've got a couple of pictures here. Uh, so we'll read the pictures and then we're going to read the story. It says, Anina with his new car. And it shows a gentleman standing beside a new car. And then we show a, a family, it looks like, up above. Let's leave the, uh, read the, the preference here. It says, this is such a blessing, says Anina, second from the right, with, and from the left, Greg, Gray, Chloe, and uh, are the car dealership employees. It says, when we help each other, everyone wins. When the 22-year-old grocery store security guard, Anina Townsend, found a wallet while at work, he decided to return return it himself biking three miles to do so soon his kindness came in full circle finishing his shift at the local grocery store in Kanaluai, hawaii security guard anina townsend spotted a wallet left behind in a grocery cart and sighed having worked at the grocery store for a while anina knew that lost items turned in the store's customer service rarely made their way back to their owners i really should return this he thought Flipping open the wallet to find the owner's ID, noting their address, he thought, their house is only a little bit out of my way. I'll just ride by and drop it off. A three-mile bike ride later, Anina knocked on the door of Chloe Marino, who answered with her husband, Gray. Hi, Anina grinned. I found your wallet at Foodland and wanted to return it. Taking the wallet in hand, Chloe was speechless. Caught up in the busyness of the day with her baby strapped to her chest, she hadn't even realized she lost it. As she stood, stunned, Gray noticed Anina's bike. Wait, did you bike here to return this to us? As Anina nodded, Chloe couldn't contain her gratitude. We're leaving for a trip tomorrow, she explained happily. Without my wallet, I couldn't get on the flight. You saved us. Touched by Anina's act, Gray took to the social media to express his thanks, and before he knew it, his message had gone viral. Anina's kind act also touched Gray's business partner, Gray Goddard who wrote to him with a genius way to thank the young man. What do you think about starting a GoFundMe to raise money to buy Anina a car? That's a great idea, Gray typed back. As word of Anina's kindness spread, donations poured in, racking over $25,000. And when the day came to tell Anina, Gray was overjoyed to share the news. We want to buy you a car with it, Gray told Anina. I just got my license last month, he said through tears. After years of only having his bike to transport him, Anina would finally have a car of his own. This is such a blessing. The blessings only continued as he began receiving messages on social media. There's so much negativity in the world, and you restored my hope, one stranger wrote. Gray and Chloe also received messages explaining how the story sparked a chain reaction of kindness. It inspired me to buy a lunch for a stranger, one person commented. It was just one kind act of kindness, but it brought such brightness to a dark world, Chloe smiled. Pano is a Hawaiian word that means doing the right thing when no one else is looking, Gray says. That's what Anina did, and that ripple effect is amazing. For Anina, nothing could have made him happier. We have to be kind to our neighbors, he smiled. When we help each other, everyone wins.
Maggie Dillard was the one who wrote the story. And the very last page. Whew. Love and laughter. Let me get some more water. Because these are cutie pies and handsome little gentlemen. And I want to share every single one of them with you. Okay. Ready for the luau. We've got a gorgeous bulldog here. And it looks like a bandana situation. And it's submitted by Claudette Lambert from Ontario. We have got a very cute, handsome prince who's five months old in this picture. And he even has a little thing on, a little like jumpy jumper outfit. It says Prince has an anniversary. And it's got five in a, like a little block that the kids would play with. And then another block on his shoulder that says months. And he just has this little grin on his face that is quite charming. And it says royally cute. Zaylin, five months submitted by Aunt Vanessa Black from Tennessee. Okay, let's see what the cute, cute little jokes here are. We have a woman with, uh, it looks like they're in the grocery store, standing talking to another woman in front of the chips section. If I'm not supposed to have midnight snacks, why is there a light on in the refrigerator, she asks. We have, it looks like, uh, a business situation here at the F Fortune Cookie Factory. They're shaking hands. It says, your resume is only eight words long. You're hired. So that's the fortune cookie factory, mind you. Oh, goodness. We have this handsome gentleman here, and it says, Candy made me do it. He's got this little grin on his face that he's going to be the charmer, let me tell you. I got the case of the giggles. Lincoln, nine months, submitted by grandmother Shannon da Davis out of Texas. Just quite adorable. This, the quote is from Mother Teresa. Every time you smile at someone, it is an action of love. A gift to that person is a beautiful thing. We have this dashing little uh, handsome fella here. He's nine months old, submitted by great aunt Janine from Carlson, Colorado. It says, let's break out the snacks. Quinn, nine months. He's adorable. Oh, and goodness gravy, this one just steals the show. Uh, she's got on a sun, sunflower jumper with little sunflower booties even. And they got her in a um, setup where she's holding the word well, there's a O on one end of her and an E on the other side. She's holding the N in the middle. So I'm thinking it says Zoe is one because they have it in, like in a little uh, bandana situation behind her. Or banner situation, I should say. With a uh, milk jug filled with sunflowers. And there's pallets all around. So it looks like she's a little country girl. Just precious as could be. It says, keep on the sunny side. Zoe 1, submitted by Mother Jessica Berry from Michigan. And that completes the whole book of Woman's World, May 3rd, 2021. And if you like that spicy food or if you celebrate Cinco de Mayo, you don't want to miss out on this issue. And it's always a great read. Enjoyed every single article and enjoyed sharing it with you even more. Now time for my famous good night. That is... Make sure you're keeping three feet of social distance, washing your hands when you can't wash your hands, you're using your hand sanitizer. There is no excuse. We're still in a pandemic. You better be wearing that mask. Furthermore, I'm going to wish you faith, hope, and love, and joy in your heart. Lots of prosperity in the bank as well as your heart as well. Remember the best thing that you can do is to give more than to receive. And the best form of payment is two words, thank you. And when they say, how can I pay you back? Ask them to do an act of kindness for someone else to keep that chain going of kindness and thoughtfulness. God bless each and every one of you. Thank you for watching and thank you for being you.